What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Movie Talks, the only podcast you need for your movie news, movie reviews, and more. So this is episode 62. We are back 62. in action again. It's almost like it's five nights at Movie Talks. I don't know. That's, that's probably the worst. Right. Come right. on. Come right. on. That's the worst. You have a whole week ever. to write a joke. Yeah, <laughs> I don't do that, though. Like, you asked me a question. Well, Damo kind of asked me a question, and I was like... A random thoughts. This is what I was thinking of he at this point in time. He didn't even say what's <laughs> what are you thinking about? And all of a sudden you're in this huge tangent. Yeah. No, no idea. I feel like you said oh, this is that's what I was thinking of. And I was like, well, this is what I was thinking of <laughs> at this present yeah, time. Yeah, thing was in context, and your thing was like four random thoughts about something totally unrelated. That's welcome to my world. This is what's happening yep. all the time. The brain of Ryman. Yeah, it's kind of like a royal hotel. It's not bad. bad. What? (laughs) How? How is that not bad? That is terrible. (laughs) How is it? Okay, explain to me how it's like a royal hotel. Because it was a sly remark. I got you there. I got you there. See, that's. But it wasn't. It wasn't actually a sly remark. But Mm. you know, at least (laughs) a sly remark is a real thing. (laughs) Like, oh, that's like a royal hotel. (laughs) You know that classic saying? It's like a royal hotel. It's it's my new thing. (laughs) <laughs> yep. If you say it more than today, I'll give it to you. <laughs> I meant just trying to work in all of our movies for the week into That's not a new thing. That is not a new thing. It is. <laughs> you fucking shoehorn in your jokes every week. <laughs> just, just, just throw it out and see what happens. Yeah, no that's, shit. That's my humor. Blumhouse is... mentality. Mm-hmm. At least I'm consistent. Blumhouse is not. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I didn't realize um Five Nights was Blumhouse. Mm, mm. I thought it was, was it Peacock. I can't remember who actually had the streaming rights. Yeah, for, distribution was. was Peacock. Yeah, Peacock. But the actual production team was Blumhouse. I am surprised Peacock actually are able to get a lot of licenses and pump out as much as they do. Like, I don't hear much. Else of they them, unless they're like bigger in America, but they ha- they have a number of things. I think they had uh, it was something or other. Twisted metal. Yeah, like random things. They just put them out and see what happens. But you know, you got to compete against the likes of Netflix. Um, for some reason, Australia. Can we just get rid of Stan? I'm sick of. I'm sick of Stan. I get don't. Rid of Stan. I don't hate Stan. Stan has a lot of good old stuff on it. Yeah, but just merge them. Give them licenses into everything else. And I hate that they yeah. have the championship. They have the Champions League, and it annoys me that you have to pay an extra, like, $15 a month or $20 a month to be able to watch the Champions League. Like, watching soccer is silly, like, expensive. Yeah. Silly. I I remember the days of Foxtel. I I had Foxtel for a long time. Up until until Netflix existed, I had Foxtel. Mm. And you'd pay the extra, it was like $25 a month to get the sports channels. Yep. And that... At that at the time felt like a fucking ripoff, but now, like you know, it was like ten sports channels for twenty five bucks. These days, you've got to have so many different streaming services to watch, oh, even yeah. just one sport, even just watch soccer across multiple different fucking leagues and shit. Like Optus it's Sports, crazy. like almost twenty dollars if you're not an Optus member. Otherwise, it's like five ninety nine or something. But yeah. Fox. Anyway, let's get into the movie news. There's a couple of big items on here. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah. So, the you remember Planet of the Apes? How they've already had two movies. There is a Kingdom. There was, there was three. No, there's two. There's a third one that's coming out. Pretty sure there's two. Okay. Pretty sure there's two. Two new ones. Uh, but Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes trailer has apes ruling the world this time. So the trailer has just wrapped. It's uh, six years since Matt Reeves' war. I quite I really liked I really liked Planet of the Apes. I'm a I'm a big fan. I even liked the um yeah. Mark Wahlberg one. Like I enjoyed that. Like quite there's already lot. been three. There was Rise of Planet of the Apes 2011, Dawn yeah. of Planet of the Apes 2014, yeah. War for the Planet of the Apes 2017, uh, okay. so and now yeah. there's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Right. Oh, maybe have I missed one? I missed some one. I didn't. I didn't watch one. um the 2017 one, War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, okay. I know, I know. I didn't watch that. Uh, I feel like I watched that on the on a plane. 
I feel like yeah, I did. That sounds about right. It's yeah. very much a plain movie. I really liked Rise and Dawn. I thought they were fucking pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but, the new trailer's out. It looks visually impressive. The trailer's... Is Andy Circus again? I cannot confirm that. I'd I say so. I'm looking it up now. Yeah. So if you like the Planet of the Apes, I'm sure they'll do a reasonable reasonable job with this one. Continuing on, four movies. No, no Andy Circus. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Okay. Okay. Look, I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I think the reboot was interesting because it was like pretty groundbreaking for like the technology, and Andy Circus did an amazing performance, and it was something new and different. But there's a reason no one cared about the third one. Like, you didn't realize it existed because. Mm. By the time the third one comes around, you've it's, you've seen it, you've done it. It's time to move on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I well, don't care. Ryan Gosling can do comedy, romance, and action. He's now in the Full Guys trailer. Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt star in the stuntman action comedy called The Full Guys. The Full Guys. Mm. So Wasn't right. there a movie called Full Guy a while ago? Was that? I, th- I think there was Free Guy. But this is the full guy. The full guy. Okay. Yeah. Ryan Gosling after his uh Ken performance. I actually really liked him as Ken. I thought he... uh, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. It's so good. Like when he first guy. cast yeah, him, look, I was I don't like, give... mm, you don't care. Why is he doing this? I don't know. Why not? Otherwise, you get typecast. So why not? Why not try and <sighs> do a number of different things? I mean, maybe it's decent. I don't know. Yeah, I know Danny we'll Radcliffe's doing a uh, a movie about. I'm not sure it's a doco. Yeah, it's about the Harry Potter, the guy on the broomstick yeah, who fell off. Yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, like paraplegic or quadriplegic after yeah, that. That's actually on the list. So <laughs> he's doing a doco on that one. The old Radcliffe. Oh, that was on your. Uh, yeah, it's not rat. It's rad. Nah, he's he's a rat. The rat. He's not. He's the best. Yeah. I love him so much. I yeah. I can't stop. Okay. Watching him and stuff. Is that series that he's in that I, I need to get around? Oh, I think like, he, he's, he's great because he's just doing whatever the fuck he wants at the moment. He's just been a rat, sneaky rat. What a rat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's called. Uh, let me look it up. Miracle Workers. Okay. It's about three or four seasons now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've heard it's really really interesting. It's got like uh, Steam Buscemi and a few other people as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to watch it, but I never got around to it. So one of those sh- because there's so many now as well. Like there's multiple seasons. Okay. It's, it's hard uh, to start. Intimidating to start. Yeah. 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 Fair. Fair. It's like post-apocalypse. Huh? Like okay. action comedy. Yeah. Mm, okay, I do like post-apocalyptic. Maybe. Yeah. Did Maybe. I? It's like okay. Mad Max. Almost like comedy Mad Max, from what I understand. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. well, uh, Damo and Jimmy would be very excited for this one. Keanu Reeves is exploring a fascinating Formula One story in the trailer for a new doco series called Brawn. Okay. Mm. Hey, F1's so, fucking trending. People loving it. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Keanu I Reeves. like I like Keanu Reeves. Have you heard the theory like that he, him, but... he's a uh, a time traveler? Like he's one yeah. of the people that <laughs> never ages. He's like an immortal yeah. vampire or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Same with him and uh and Paul Rudd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. They look no different from when they were like 20. It's crazy. There's also like photos of the 1900s of like people. Yeah. Well, a person that yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. Keanu Reeves. Like uh-huh. Almost I've pretty. Seen that too. Pretty spitting image. It's pretty close. <laughs> it's a fun uh, little. Uh, it's pretty cool. Experiment, thought experiment. Do you remember the movie, the uh, fall, the one that gave us a bit mm-hmm. of vertigo? Uh, yep. is, is now a sequel has been greenlit. So okay, it'll be a sequel to fall. Doesn't surprise me. Mm. I, I, I don't mind fall. Hey, yeah, I don't know that it'd be able to capture the same, like, excitement. Because, like, what's the next thing they're going to climb? Yeah. And, so, like, if they try to do any sort of twist, we're all going to be looking for one, you know? Yeah. Like, well, that was you, part of what made the first one interesting was you didn't expect it to be anything decent and you didn't expect it to have a fucking plot twist. 
Did you see the, um, have you seen it? There's this really unique job where you only work two days of the year where you actually have no. to go up one of those and change the light bulb. It pays like 130, 150 grand and you have to climb up the, the entire tower to change the light every six months. It's a... You have to work two days a year. I'll do that. Easy. It's a three-hour climb up. Yeah, fine. You sure? It's two tough days. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there'd be, there'd be so many fucking safety precautions and shit. Oh, yeah. That climb would be just up the top, like when it's like just moving. Oh, it'd be terrible. It'd be so, terrible, but terrible for two days a year. Yeah. Instead of terrible for 300 days a year, like every other job. <laughs> Anything yeah. about me can work less, man. If I can work yeah, right. less, give me the job. <laughs> well, there you go. There's there's a job for you. Like, I don't Wait, know if... I'll, I'll make I don't it know. Don't know if you have to be on call for like the rest of the time. Just yeah, I probably like... won't pass the fucking the, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the fitness test and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, that's, well. that's an interesting job. Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world screening Boom. with Edgar Wright and Emma Sil- Silgerman. Sil- Silgerman has a Q and A. So Seligman. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Is she in it? I don't know. She was in Bottoms. Uh, is she well, in Scott Pilgrim? Apparently. They just had a Q&A. So, uh, okay. Mm. Who knows? Take a right. As we know, the director of Brilliant. Mm. What? But how is she related in any in any way to Scott Pilgrim versus the world? Uh, maybe the epic Scott Pilgrim. Tickets for this one of a kind. Screening are selling fast. Oh. It's just a screening of Scott Pilgrim, and then you have a Q and A with Edgar Wright and Emma live and in. Yeah, the but flesh. why would I? Why would I want to go to a a question? Why was she answering questions about Scott Pilgrim? Um, because she can. Because I understand. Uh, with bottom sitting cinemas, Friday, uh, she's doing the interview. An all new anime offering Scott Pilgrim just takes weeks uh, away. Seventeenth, I don't know. Maybe she is a voice in the new one. Mm. She shouldn't be because it's only oh, it doesn't matter. One of those headlines that she's probably <laughs> reading into it too much. Yeah. I wonder if she's just, she's doing the actual questioning. I wonder. Like she's Maybe. the one doing the interviewing potentially. I don't have no yeah. idea. I don't know. That's real soon. 17th. Mm. It's like fucking less than two weeks away. Yep. I'm super keen. I'm not. We are 100% keen. watching it. Yeah. We are definitely watching it for pod. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. Uh, M- Mika Man- Malika Monroe starring in its following sequel, They Follow. What? <laughs> Mike, Micah, Mika M A I K A Monroe. So, yeah, back in 2014, a cult horror film, it follows, launched, and got quite good. Got a cult following, so there's a sequel coming for that. After oh, it follows, oh, I've heard yeah. it follows is decent. Okay. Yeah. So that's getting yeah, a yeah. sequel. And Matthew sure. Perry has died at age 54. He has. Yeah. yeah. Very, very unique individual. So my wife's mm. been listening to his book because she's a big Friends fan. And I've heard yeah. bits and pieces of it. And he was quite a troubled man with his... Uh, there was There's mm-hmm. one point where he was taking 54 Vicodin a day. Yeah. And he was it's... saying he can't even watch Friends because all he sees is which level of addiction he was in. Like that season I was on cocaine, that season I was drunk every day, that season, like that's, it's yeah. a struggle for him. Yeah, right. It's actually really interesting now that he's died, there's obviously a lot of publicity coming out around him. And like, I don't have anything against the guy, of course, but it's interesting to see him talk about addiction and, and like how much it's like suffering. It's just suffering and having no choice. And yeah, it's um, crazy. Yeah. Cause me and my partner's, um, currently getting through the britney spears autobiography yep and then she's gonna move on to the uh matthew perry one yep we well my wife did the the britney spears finish that and is now on to the perry there one. you go yeah yep, yep. yep. yeah similar yeah so the first time she's ever actually used the audible credits like i use it i use it every day i'm doing audiobooks yeah yep yeah fair because that one's got the actual like book book Ah, when we walk the dogs and stuff, they like put it on or driving to and from places. Oh, so you've been listening to it as well? 
Oh, I've been picking up bits and pieces, but yeah, I yeah, can't stand audiobooks at normal speed. It has to be two times speed. Otherwise, I can't deal with it. Two times? Only 1.5? No, two times. Otherwise, it's too it's slow quick. delivery. It's not, ne- it's not words in my brain. It's just mushed together if it's two times the speed. Oh, really? No. I I see real vivid images. Like I do that when I read as well. It's like a movie playing in my head. Mm. Mm. So... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I listen to a lot of podcasts. That's that's my audio stories. Okay. Well, as you know, I've got lots of thoughts all at one time, so I need. You sure do. <laughs> I need quick things you happening. Sure do. Yeah. Just just like <laughs> ma- many things appearing on screen, the first image of Rachel Zegger in Snow White. All the dwarves are CGI. What? Why? Because they are all seven. They're all CGI. It's crazy. Silly. Why make them CGI? No, because there's seven of them and they're all CGI. It, yes, they look... I'm saying the seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> they look terrible. Oh, they look like shit. She yeah. looks CGI. Yeah, she's not there, but the rest are. Oh, yeah. fucking hell, Disney. <laughs> Stop with this stupid shit. When's this out? March 21st. 2025? Yeah. Takes a lot to yeah, wow. CGI them. Fucking hell. <laughs> I didn't even know this is even coming out. Oh, really? This is the first I've heard of it. Oh, Shit, wow. it looks, looks terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, why can't you just... Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care anyway. It's not a fucking IP I give a shit about. I never liked Snow White. No, but I'm sure they'll they'll do something or other. I'm sure they'll heavily make it public. Yeah, it's yeah. just so they can refresh their fucking copyright like everything else. Pretty much. Without doing it justice. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yep. Why? Bring it on. Yep. That's it for movie news. Unless you've heard any bits and pieces. Uh, mm. Not really. No. no. Okay. Cora, it's been a little bit quiet. I said my piece. So, so that's fine. Let's move mm. on to our first, tr- our trending movie of the week, because we do yep. have that brand new format, which is I uh, trending, you pick, I pick. Or Lawson yep. Pick, Ramen Pick. So yep. this is Five Nights at Freddy's based there off is. of... It's it's uh, based in the universe, but their own take of the expanded universe, apparently. This is what people of the, of the franchise were telling me. They were saying the books are a different universe to the games. I was like, okay. And what's this? What universe is this in then? Books or th- games? This is... They've taken all of it and made their own story about it. So it takes bits and pieces from the games. It's a, a third universe of the, the franchise, I guess. You know, yep. A franchise that they're, they're making it sound like it's got fucking deep, deep lore, like Star Wars and shit. Apparently it does. Apparently there is, there's heaps to it. Apparently there's heaps mm. of ex- expanded lore. Look, I don't, I don't sure. know. I've never played it and neither have I. No, but, it seems like it's very, very simple. Well, and this this is my first introduction to the entire franchise and same fucking horrible. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a troubled security guard begins working at Freddy's Fazbear Pizza. During his night on the job, he realizes that the night shift won't be so easy to get through. Pretty soon, he will unveil what actually happened at Freddy's. Dun, dun, dun. I'm already yawning. <laughs> So this is based in the Five Nights at Freddy's universe, which is led by Josh Hutchinson, who is Mike, which is a oh, that's where I've seen him. He was in the Hunger Games. I was like, yeah, I could, Peter. Yeah, I couldn't pick where he was. So serious? That's all I can see when I pick when I look at him is Peter. No, I was like, oh, it annoyed me throughout the entire film. I was like, oh no, I've seen you somewhere. Oh, wow. And well, I don't watch Hunger Games earlier. that often. And he was also into Journey to the Center of the Earth with Brendan Fraser. So, mm, yeah. Mm, no one cares about that movie. It's sort of a sort of a uh, forgettable. And the actually, yeah. And the uh, f- rip off of Jumanji in space, uh, Zathers, a Space Adventures. He was in that as what? well. There was a, like a. Uh, pretty much a Jumanji, but instead of going into like the jungle, they went into. Oh, Zathora. Yeah, so on. Yeah, yeah. fucking hell. Yeah, you forgot that one existed, oh, didn't you? Bag of dicks. Yeah, <laughs> Dax Shepard was in it. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so bad. So Mike um, is in custody of his sister and is raising his sister, Abby. Abby has some very... His sister's in his custody, not the other way around. Oh, yeah, whatever. It, it matters. <laughs> it, it kind of feels a little bit the same at times. So Abby has some very complex needs where she uh, is very defiant and wants to only do what Abby wants to do. So All she wants to do is, is draw pictures and with fucking crayons. Not like she's out doing drugs and fucking <laughs> shooting up heroin and stuff. <laughs> she's, she wants to sit in the corner and she's like a little autistic kid. She just wants to draw and, and chill out. Yeah. So Mike struggles to make ends meet and is a security guard at, is it a local mall? I forget. I, yeah, I initially. Yeah, yes. yeah. So he's a security guard at a local mall. He sees mm-hmm. a an adult hurrying a kid away. He overreacts and thinks that this person is taking the kid away and he yeah. chases him and starts to have an altercation, which leads to him beating up the father of a child. Spear tackles this dad and beats a shadow. And the kid's saying they're going, daddy, daddy. And he doesn't stop. Like yeah. you can hear this kid calling out to his dad and just continues to beat his face in, in yeah. a fucking fountain yeah. for some reason. So he loses yep. his job. He then gets a, I guess, a job finding person or an agent, which is Shaggy Do. Uh, Shaggy Do. Or Matthew Lillard, man. Matthew, Matthew I love Lillard. Him. <laughs> yeah. Apparently he signed on for two more movies. So this is already screenlit for another two movies. <laughs> yeah, there's sort of a uh, a thing in the credits, but yeah. So he uh, gives him this opportunity for a new job. It has a very high turnover of staff, and he has to guard this place and keep people out, which turns out to be Freddy's Pizza. <laughs> Yep. There is an overarching plot of the uh who is aunt. The auntie wants custody of Abby so that she can yeah. get she can get money, which has no real no. like point to this. Like it doesn't really it's, add anything to it at all. Its only purpose is to make him take the job. Which they could have done it's so many other fucking ways. Yeah. She was like such a Fucking crazy bitch as well. Like so, so beyond a reasonable person. She was un like she wasn't even rational with like what she was doing it for. Like, no, she, there doesn't seem to be any motive why she was like that mean or that. Besides, she wanted a paycheck of like child custody or whatever. Yeah, the American equivalent. Yeah, is. that's that's what he was saying. Oh, she's just doing it. She wants the fucking the child services checks. It's like yeah. really, she she's. She's trying to pay other people to get this guy fired and ruin his life so she can cash him checks. Yeah. Like, Jesus. And look after a kid. Like, yeah, I don't know. It, she, her motivations were fucking ridiculous, but I guess so was a lot of this movie. Yeah. It seemed like it's just the first thing. That added nothing into it besides being no. a kind of a catalyst to Mike taking a job. Well, considering he just lost his security guard job because he beat up a, a kid's father. Like, yeah. I feel like there's motivation because he was like almost getting yeah. evicted from his house. Like that could it's have all just needs been, to be. That could yep. have just been the motivation for him to go. Yes, <laughs> simple but more realistic than this crazy manipulative bitch yeah. going. But and they also wanted her to fucking pay the guys to come break in so they could do some death fodder. But yeah. anyway, that's we're getting there. So there's there's that unnecessary like plot. Then we have a whole. The whole job was to keep people out. So he's he's at his at his job and he's like he gets a knock on the door and it turns out to be a police officer and he's like, Yeah, come on in. Like right. your, your number one job is to keep people out. <laughs> yep. Don't show me your badge or anything, just walk on in. Yeah, he's just you failed you failed your job straight yep. away. Sack him. <laughs> it was so bizarre. There's also this this whole plot of him having this trauma episode of him seeing someone take his brother, which yes, there's this... he's trying to relive the moment so that he can find out more information. Yes, because at first, because like he he puts up a a picture of a forest above his bed, so when he falls asleep, he can stare at the forest and it'll take him back to the moment. And I was like, why the fuck would you put a 
a traumatizing, a triggering. Why would you try and revisit a traumatizing and, and moment in your life over and over again? But it's because he's trying to find out more information and he's trying to like lucid dream and whatever. Yeah. And it, it it was all shit. And like the way that was even shoehorned into the end. Oh my god, <laughs> I I fucking have so many problems with the writing of this. Right. It was a mess. <laughs> It took ages to even see like any of the, I guess, the animatronics, which are the whole point of yeah. the whole point of um the Freddy universe. Like yep. I don't I don't know if this meshes into the games or if that was like the origins of how I guess Freddy or the other lot of minions yeah, or animal know. animatronics mm-hmm. like get involved. Like I was so confused. I thought Freddy was the is Freddy the bear? Freddy, Freddy, the bear. Freddy Faz Bear. Fre- Freddy's the bear, yes. Yeah. I thought he was the main one, but I feel like he didn't even get much screen time. We got more screen time of like the is it was it a wolf? Um a yeah, wolf and a bunny. Like I feel like they got more screen time. Yeah, than bunny got more Freddy. screen time. Like yeah. Is that because is he a fan favorite? Like is the considering the game is Freddy, mm-hmm. and I thought like Freddy would be would be the one. That you sort of like, hey, you know, this is this is the main the main horror jump yeah. scare. There also was I mean, no the place is named after him. Yeah. Sorry. There was no jump. There was no scares. jump scares. They fucking tried with that doll. That like <laughs> that we see. This is one of the first jump scares before we even see any of the fucking animals. There's this doll thing that's holding like a lollipop. That's just like a figurine that's inside a locker, and it like it gives us this jump scare. And they, they use the same doll jump scare at the end, like during the credits, and they do it like right towards the end. I don't understand. It it's real like questionable. I, I don't I don't see the point when there is literally these fucking haunted animatronics tearing people apart and killing people, and they, we have this doll that doesn't do anything. They just they just try to make us scared of it. For I don't really. Maybe if I knew what the fucking maybe if I knew what the doll was, maybe the doll has some significance for those who know Freddy's. But for me, it just wasn't was the doll the the whole um they wanted uh the Abby to become the doll. It was like join us, we want your sister. I thought that was the whole. I thought that was oh, no, the whole no, that, not that for doll. No, that doll was a yeah, yeah. Doll. They all look the That's same. That's the animatronic man. doll. This was this was like the little fucking you know two inch tall. Uh, animatronic, oh, animatronic. It wasn't animatronic. It was like a little figurine with right. this little kid, like a little plumpy kid with the fucking pinwheel hat and, and lollipop. Okay. And it was in his locker, and it was like, oh, scary. And he turns it around. They they use it three times for the same jump scare, and it, it's not scary in any way. Also, no one was likable. Nobody. No. Mike was not likable. Abby was not likable. The mother, die. the auntie, was not likable. The police no. officer was. More likable than the others, but still like I kept thinking she was gonna be like part of the nefarious plot. I thought she might have been dead and she was actually like sixth sense bullshit. Some yeah, like, oh I've been dead the whole time or sometime. I thought she was yeah. like her guardian angel, whatever, like Yeah, I wrote my know. notes. Is Vanessa gonna be a ghost too or some shit? Like I thought I thought the exact same thing. But yeah, um because you only ever saw her at the um what's it called like around mike or at yeah the, at yep. the thing i was and like he interact with her for a long time mm-hmm. yeah i was like oh can anyone can anyone else see you and somehow you know about all the the animals but the twists yeah, everything oh, it was not yeah it wasn't even like oh that was a cool twist it was like no. oh, oh okay i'm glad this i'm glad this is coming to an end yeah it was it was obvious that the writers were like oh we need a twist. We need to have something at the end that makes people go, oh, wow. And like tie everything together. But they just, again, they shoehorn the fuck out of it. It it, it was so lazy. It, the writing was lazy. And like at one point, because the story sets up for a long time that like we are going to be spending five nights with Mike and each night is going to get a little spookier and the f- fifth night is going to be a showdown between him and these animatronics. And then all of a sudden the story becomes Abby's friends with the ghosts and they're all, they're all laying around and talking and playing like it's a fucking campfire. And then 
then it goes evil again. And like, because they want to actually capture Abby. And by then they're, they're not scary anymore. They're like, there was this whole scene with three guys breaking into the place because the auntie wants them to break in, to make him look bad. And, and if he doesn't stop them from getting into the place, then he's going to get fired. And yet they went during the day, even though he's only works at night. Like, how's it his fault? But whatever. It's, again, bad writing. Um, And they just had this whole fucking scene. It was like 10 minutes of these men destroying Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, whatever the fuck it's called, just so they could have some murder happen. Because we spend the whole story with three characters who all survive at the end. And you've got to have death. You've got to have these fucking animatronics got to do scary things and kill some people. And it meant nothing. It was just fodder. Mm -hmm. Absolute fodder. It would have been more exciting if they were like, they actually took Abby and like changed her into one of the dolls. And like, that was been awesome. Like that would have been shove Abby in a saw trap and get her fucking ripped to pieces. And then the showdown is between Mike and his little sister, who's now this fucking demonic doll thing. Yeah. And he has to like kill his own sister. And like this could have been so much more than what it was. Yeah. Or even like the actual twist. Like I don't care if I'm spoiling it, but like no, fuck it. Like they care St- Steve, the guy that hired Mike, Matthew, is is Matthew the Lord, yep. Yep. He's he's the he's the guy. He's the guy that sets all this up. He takes people and yep. he has his own suit, which all of a sudden like starts to crumble him and he like now he's never going to die so now he's going to be this into like immortal possessed yep. i don't even know what his suit was i can't remember yeah like, i don't understand why his suit was ripping him apart at the end at all no it, it didn't make any sense so like and he was vanessa's dad for some reason and that's how he knew it all and he just fucking stabs her oh, fuck, okay sick like yeah and she survived of course because he Cause was he to... the one that took the his uh, Mike's brother as well. Yeah, that's the part that was like, what the fuck are they trying to do? Because they were trying to set up, yes, that he Mike's brother as a child was taken by this bloke, the guy who opened Freddy it Fazbear's, is... and mm-hmm. it's a huge fucking coincidence that this has all happened to be worked out. Like, but it, it didn't mean anything, it, and I, I was expecting it to turn out that one of the animatronics was actually haunted by his brother. And that again, would have been a showdown between his, he finally found out what happened to his brother and his brother is now haunting this place. And, but nope, nope, nope. His, his brother just died. I suppose. I don't yep. know. All of a sudden. He, yep. He just, they just like snapped up the ending, like and wrapped it. Yeah. Cause they did mention that the, the ghost kids were all um, the animals. Cause yes, th- and I was like, surely one of them's a brother then. Yeah. But they, they didn't like, touch, uh, they didn't touch on it. They didn't do anything. They was just like these are nope. ghost children. I was like, yep. oh, okay. Okay. What <laughs> and one but, of them was in a cupcake. Oh, they they, which... they didn't Yeah, I, I don't understand that. Why could it fly? I'm so confused why yeah. it can fly. Just fucking boot it across the it's a fucking cupcake. <laughs> Kick it. <laughs> and like even the kids, like the brothers aren't even listed. It's like ghost kid, blonde boy, ghost kid with bunny ears, yep. ghost kid, ghost kid with hook. Yeah, yeah. Ghost kid with hat. <laughs> so, I know. If you're going to okay. fucking give me a two hour movie with maximum four characters, really, you know, at least try and flesh it out a little bit and then instead of just dancing the, around the plot. The, there was the babysitter, and the babysitter was like planted yeah, by. Yeah. I was, oh, no, I was so over it. I was I so know. confused. It like, was they, this, they thought they were doing something smart. It was just fucking everywhere. Like if I was a big fan of the video games and the extended universe, I'd be so disappointed with this. Like mm-hmm. I can't see anyone being like, "Oh, that was amazing." No, I That's... think I think if you are like 13, 12, 20, 14, and you're a big fan of FNAF. And all you wanted to see was the animatronics in real life. This would have been great. You would have, you would have like, fuck yeah, look, oh, that, I like that character, and that room looks like the room from the game, and oh, the video cameras, and there would have, I'm sure there would be a lot of fan service in this. But 
that isn't enough to hold together a really poorly written movie. No, just at least skimming through the IMDb reviews, they were saying the visuals like pretty spot on. Like they were, they're saying yeah, visu- visually, the visually impressive, and then they're saying the plot and the the uh, what's it called screenplay, absolutely shocking, horrible. Yeah, like one of the worst stories I've seen in a long time. Like visuals, <laughs> yeah, really cool. One of the reviews, and Nicolas Cage did better. <laughs> Nicolas Cage did better. He fuck. He'll be so fun in this. Well, it'd be real. Um, good. like, uh, sorry. One thing I will give it credit for, and the reason it's not getting a fucking zero or a half a star, is thank fuck the animatronics were actually anim- animatronics or like people in suits. Well, that's fine. That's so much better than dumb CGI. The cupcake was dumb CGI at times. But whatever, how else you make a cupcake fly across the room? Um, but at least the rest of them, like the wolf, whatever his fucking name was, at least that was a puppet. Mm. Like that had presence and that was something. I'll give him that. But besides that, and the setting was really cool. Like the actual, the actual fucking Freddy Fazbear's pizza place. Yeah. Really cool looking. But otherwise, it was, it was a fucking mess. It was a mad mess. It was just jumbled and like no. just give us him going getting a new job and he's spending five nights there and just have each night get creepier and creepier like yeah. that's that's i would All have been happy to be i would have been happy with that i don't need a complex plot of his brother no him trying to deal with his trauma and no ugh, it was just it was just an hour and a half it has been an hour and a half simple story cool visuals the characters we know and love supposedly not me but you know it could have been just a simple plane, but they tried going really like complex with it, and it was just dumb, really yep. dumb. Yep. In yep. fact, it's over ninety minutes. They they repeated information like so many times. They're like, "Yeah, I've heard this. Like, let's move on." Anyway, speaking of moving on, I'm fucking t- I'm done talking Oof. about it. One out of five, waste of time. Uh, if you're a FNAF fan, you might like it, but uh, I couldn't see anybody. If you're a dumbass baby, or you're a FNAF fan, maybe. Everybody else is going to get mad at it. Yep. Simple. It's a one. It's a one for me as well. Yeah. Just visually, it was okay. It's just there's there's no likable characters and it's just it's not exciting. Not yep. exciting at all. So that movie for babies. Soz FNAF fans. Did they yeah. did you do? Unlucky. Unlucky. I was kind of excited. Well, I was gonna be, vaguely excited. There's going to be two other movies. So. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, next. Mm. All right, so now it is time for Lawson Picks. It is the Royal Hotel presented by Screen Australia. Heck yeah. Do you want to do the honours of this one? Saying that it is your one you've been excited for. Sure, yeah. Uh, I first heard about this from the Adelaide Film Festival. I was going to go watch it at the film festival, but just didn't get time in the end. They had two screenings and one of them was like a gala event. I was like, I'm not fucking going to a gala event, getting dressed up and shit. So I was happy to see this um, on like streaming services. So it, uh, after running out of money while backpacking in a tiny male dominated town in the Australian outback, two friends resort to a working holiday at the Royal Hotel. When the local behave, when the locals behavior starts crossing the line, the girls find themselves trapped in an unnerving situation that grows rapidly out of their control. So yes, it is uh, follows the story of two Americans. They tell everyone they're Canadian because everyone likes Canadians. Uh, yep. Yeah, two Americans <clears throat> who they're in like a city somewhere. They don't say which one. Well, it's, it's uh, apparently loosely based on the Hotel Kalgoorlie. Oh, so, Kalgoorlie. Oh, yes. sure. So it's based off the documentary and the actual events of that. Oh, I didn't know mm. all that. There you go. Mm. I looked. I I've, looked been that, I've been to that hotel in Kalgoorlie. I've also yeah. been to the Royal Hotel in because this is filmed up near Port Pirie. Yeah, I found out when I was watching it. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so it starts off with them in like a city, and they run out of money, so they go to their they're like in, they're in Sydney. Sydney, sure. They go to their like uh, work and travel person, and they. The only job available for them is out fucking whoop whoop. So they hike out to nowhere land 
to the Royal Hotel and uh they're greeted by this uh like the woman who ends up being like the cook, part owner of the hotel, and her hubby who is Hugo Weaving, who is unrecognizable in this. So good in everything he does and Hugo and Weaving is amazing, yeah. Isn't he? He's, and but... in this he's just like a drunken fucking bogan, more or less. The one that um, I like fully was like, yeah, he's amazing. He's V for Vendetta when he yeah. plays V. I was like, that's absolutely that's incredible. Yeah, from fucking Priscilla Queen of the Desert to V Vendetta, fucking Matrix, and then this, you know, like I love that he's willing to put his name to things he's passionate about, like the Dan Radcliffe, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, so they more or less go out to this, like it's like a mining town, which makes sense that it's Kalgoorlie. Uh, it's so, a, a FIFO environment. They all fly and yeah. fly outs. Yeah, yeah, literally. And uh, yeah, they're sort of working at this hotel. And it's not like, when I say it's suspense, it's not like a horror suspense. It's not a mystery or anything like that. It's more like the whole movie, you're seeing it from their perspective obviously but it's it's almost like you don't know who to trust and as you're watching it and you're experiencing the world with them you know you start to like some people and then you sort of start to feel like that person's dangerous you like somebody else but then they feel dangerous and other people are scared of them so the whole thing sort of has you on edge um and yeah it's told through the lens of these two american girls one is like bit more carefree and like yeah it's fine everything will be okay don't worry about it whereas one of them uh the blonde one whose name i've forgotten already Anna, uh i feel like it's more told through her lens than it is Liv's. yes yes it is Liv and what was her name hannah hannah yes without that without the second h mm-hmm. um yeah hannah it's more through hannah's perspective and hannah is like a bit more on edge and at first i'm like fucking Hannah get over yourself like you're in the fucking country people are gonna be a bit strange out here like I grew up in like country towns and country pubs we traveled a lot my parents love spending time at pubs like this um so like you know a lot of this I connect with and I'm sitting at her like you just fucking relax these people aren't gonna hurt you you know give us some time (laughs) but you know it turns out she's justified and I guess that if the movie wasn't about dangerous people, it would be a very interesting movie. Uh, but yeah, it more or less follows these two and and they're working at the hotel. And again, you're trying to second guess who is and who isn't dangerous. Um, and that's sort of where it goes from there, I guess. Yeah. I... They, they sold it as a thriller though. I don't think it's a thriller at all. I think it's more, yeah. of, a, it's more of a drama. It's yep. far more of a drama. And Hannah feels like she has paranoia. I feel like it's not justified, like, to the, I don't know. It's, this felt like a attempt to show what iso- people in isolation will go to. Like, it was a, it was a weird sort yeah. of take, but it did really well in capturing, like, Australian kind of vibes, like a rural Australia. Yep. Like, it, it did really well with that, especially when the... Because they start on like the your standard, then backpacking, night clubbing, yeah. And they're on a boat, and Hannah tries to buy a drink. Cars decline, or no, Liv Liv's trying to buy it, and Hannah's making out with some some other backpacking tourist on a Random boat, guy. yeah, yeah, in Sydney. And that's that's like kicks them off. It seems weird that this guy's like your only job is this one out here. Like surely there's other jobs somewhere closer. You'd but, think. Because you went so. through from Sydney to Kalgoorlie, like yeah. <laughs> you almost couldn't get further away. No, so I watched the trailer of the actual documentary that this is based on, and the documentary and looking at reviews of the documentary is the actual events were is quite confronting. Like it's quite creepy. It's quite like pretty out there. Where what's the doco? Do you know? Uh, hotel, hotel Kalgoorlie or something or other. It yeah. um yeah. So when I was looking after I watched it, I was looking in um IMDb in the reviews. People were saying just watch the documentary. It's a far better unnerving experience. Sure. Of it, where 
it, it didn't hit any thriller. The only part that I felt like had actual proper tension was uh, towards the end. But then as soon as the tension started building, they just like resolved it out of nowhere. Like I was, it was really anticlimactic. Like it just, it just went back. I agree. And I was like, what, wait, that's it? That's it? Yes. You've, you've built like this really, really slow tension. And you've yes. had all these people that were portrayed to be these like, Mis- like mystery backgrounds that we don't know if they're supposed to be mm-hmm. dangerous or Hannah's mm-hmm. just having paranoia. And then yep. you have this actual moment where there's this old couple celebrating their wedding anniversary and this other guy that's been built up to be like, oh, I don't really like him, but nah, he's all right. He's a good dude. And then he's like, just loses the plot. And then yeah, it's like, here's the, here's the climax and here's the resolution. I was like, oh. Yes. Also, I, I agree. The ending, if this is the pride and joy of that township or that thing, why is everyone yeah. cheering? How does they that happen? Down. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. yeah, good job, girls. It's like, yeah, this, this is your only like social interaction. This is this is what you do day in day out. Like you go there every uh-huh. night. Why are you cheering them yeah. on that they burnt it down? I'm so confused. It, it felt like 90 minutes of who can I trust and who can I not trust to then end with a cool guys don't look at explosions moment is real bizarre. Yeah. That, that to me is the weakest part. Like I, I was really enjoying the movie and the tension and, and like the distrust with everyone. There was no one who I felt comfortable around. And I love that like unsettling feeling in my stomach the whole time I was watching it. Um, but yeah, you're right. It just sort of, it just sort of ends. And the ending was such an anticlimax for like, we see like it's building to it. And, and I don't think that's, it's, I, I don't think it's fair to say it was an anticlimax because like there wasn't climax to the end. Like it did build to something, but like, then it just sort of didn't get there. Like it didn't quite reach the point of like a big moment, which I mean, I don't know if it needed that, but it just felt like, oh, really? It's going to end like that? Like, yeah, like if you're going to do slow burn, like it just it never ignited. You know, like you you see the cord going to a TNT, like C4, whatever it is, and it's just it. You're waiting for an explosion that just never happened. Mm. That's what it was for me. Like you're seeing Hannah become more and more. You're like, is she paranoid? Is she not paranoid? Is she overreacting? Mm-hmm. Like it's justified, yeah. Like what's what's happening here? Like I was just like, oh, okay, that's that's it. I'm I'm still confused whether she was paranoid or these people were just like were actually just going about their day to day sort of mm-hmm. thing. Because like Liv didn't seem to be worried at all. So no. I was like confused, yeah. almost. Is, I was like, is, ignorance. Yeah, but I was like, is Hannah like? just paranoid and she's just feeling uncomfortable yeah. like are these people just you you work a blue collar love a drink kind of guy that's how i felt yeah but it's also like when i when i've spent time at pubs like this and met people like dolly like teeth the other bloke whatever i don't feel intimidated by them and i wouldn't behave the way she would but that's because i'm not a woman and i'm not a target and i'm not a fish out of water here like I've spent time around these places and it doesn't feel that uncomfortable to me. Whereas the whole time I'm watching her, I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, people, people, people are treating you poorly because you're treating them poorly. Like I, I felt like her attitude from the beginning sucked. And she was the one like, yeah, anyway, anyway. Um, But the tension's really good. Like I... The whole time watching it, like I said, I felt really uncomfortable. And I think that within itself was a pretty powerful thing to to feel, to not be a woman, but to feel scared to be a woman. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. it, I think this does that well. Yeah. Because if, if this was two blokes, it wouldn't have anywhere near the the fear or tension that it had. Yeah. It's At just, all. Uh, yeah. But for two mates that are traveling around backpacking, they didn't seem to like each other. They seemed strangers. Yeah. And I wish there was a bit more. Like, it's just, they just seemed Sorry. like, oh, okay. 
did you guys meet by chance? Are you yeah. just traveling around? Like what's the what's it's the double edge? Here? Like I feel like I'm kind of glad I didn't get this huge fucking backstory of why they're backpacking and what they're trying to run away from. Because Liv a couple of times said she was trying, they're trying to escape where they were and this is the furthest place they could go and whatever. But I also would have like yes, I'm glad I didn't get all that because I didn't need all that. But also, I would have liked something. Like, are they friends? <laughs> like, they meet each other on this trip. I don't understand really a whole lot of what's going on. But do we need to? I don't know. I f- well, um, you could at least got two two people that had some chemistry together. Like, they just didn't even they didn't bounce off each other. They didn't. They yeah, just, there's never, and like never seemed to be any. If they were friends back home, there's no way that Liv would agree to go traveling with Hannah because Hannah's a bit of fucking a bit of a stick in the mud, if that's even a saying. Like she's just kind of shit. <laughs> she's kind of rude. She's like not fun. She doesn't want to do fun things. She's always like, yeah, I don't know, paranoia, maybe anxiety. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. So I've sent you the link to the documentary. It was it's came out in 2016. A so, Kulgardi. Kulgardi. So yeah. It's a Western Australia. Yeah. I was close. Close, but no cigar. But right, apparently where so on a road between Australia's most isolated town and its largest gold mine lines, Kulgardi, where the arrival every three months of a new foreign backpacker couple is a much anticipated event. Yeah, so sure. that's what we see at the start. We see the two Finnish. Yeah, we see the two girls that are from, I think they're England in the English in the movie, and Finnish. Hey, from Finland, Finnish. It says. Yeah, yeah, but in in the actual movie, the movie when, oh, this movie when Hannah and Liv turn up, they're from the. the oh, two sorry, yeah, my bad. I was where, reading the cool Guardy stuff. Yeah, the two, <laughs> yeah. two in the actual movie are from England. And then the actual story is based on the girls from uh, Finland. So everyone in the IMDb reviews say to watch this documentary over the movie. They're saying okay, this, is, down. this is a much more, um, tr- well, based on the events. And watching yeah, the yeah. trailer, it's like, okay, yeah, they everyone is a, is a bit creepy. So like in the in the trailer they show it's a race to see who can like lay claim to the new foreigner backpackers. Yeah. Yeah. We saw it a little bit like that with Liv. Like you can see at the end, Teef came out and fucking like rammed his car into Dolly and beating shit up. But then and then I expected Teeth to come in and try and like claim Liv and Liv's like, you get out of here. And he's like, all right, and leaves. And that's the end. Yeah. Like yeah, but I guess also, like again to, for a film that's super realistic and, and set within a familiar world, do we need a fucking a climax like every movie? Like, is this more realistic and is is more realism a better thing? But then don't burn the place down. I feel like the burning the the, ho- the the whole hotel down took me away from the realism of of the other ninety minutes. Yeah. Also, the locals cheering him on. I oh, was so yeah, it was so bizarre. Like it was it weird. A, it was a weird, weird ride. Like they did some things really well, and they did some other things really poorly. Like it was, it was bizarre. Yeah. It was bizarre. I still really liked it, and I've been recommending it to people. I was talking to someone today what things I've seen recently, and I said this is on my okay. list of recommendations. Okay. I still really enjoyed it. Um, there's a few things I thought were strange choices, but yeah. Okay. You know, they're trying to make me feel uncomfortable and try to make me feel uh, like a victim. And, and I, I felt that. I, I felt like what they were trying to make me feel was done. Yeah. So, yeah. I just, I don't know. I Because I looked at, I looked it up and it was like thriller. I was like, okay. But I feel like it wasn't really? a thriller. I feel like it was no. a thriller. And it was more Suspense. of a drama. Yeah. Suspense drama. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm still confused with it. I wouldn't recommend it, but I wouldn't be really? like, don't watch it. Like, I wouldn't go out okay. of my way. If someone said, hey, what's the Royal Hotel like? I'd be like, I wouldn't give an award. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. 
I won't give it an award, no. But if someone yeah. said, oh, have you watched that? I was, I was like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I'd watch it. Go, go watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'd right. recommend it. It's all right. I don't know. It's just, I felt like it was anticlimactic. Like I was watching the, the fuse be lit and I see it drawing down. And I just, it's like Wiley Coyote. You're watching him and you're waiting for him to mess up and have the explosion or it to go wrong in his face. And it just, it just never exploded. It's just, I'm kind of okay with that though. No, no. The burning of the, the hotel is just, it's unforgivable. It's unforgivable. Yeah. I just felt that, that to me was, that that's reduced it by half a star that that ending didn't need to happen they could have they could have just walked out they could have just, and just walked away so i'm pretty sure but, that hotel's still up in it I feel like it's up yeah i don't know are you in the real hotel yeah 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 it still exists yeah, it's it's like... not it's closed down like where this is it's not a it's not a real pub that's not never been open for years right okay but, Anyway, uh, happy to to give it a, a rating if okay. you are. Yep. It's a two. Two for me. Two. Two. Oh, wouldn't, wouldn't recommend it. That. But, like, it wasn't bad. But, it, I don't know, it's just the ending where you're walking out like an action hero where you've not set up that you're an action hero to yes. have the locals cheering you on that they've just burnt down your pride and joy. You only think to do at night time. It's, just, it's yeah. so bizarre. I don't think that ruined the film though. Like, I don't think it. It took me. I don't think it took me out of how uncomfortable I felt with the rest of it. Like I'm not sure I'd rewatch this in a rush, but that's because I felt the way they wanted me to feel. I felt uncomfortable and anxious and okay. in danger. I suppose. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for me, it's three and a half. Okay. It'd be it'd be a four if it wasn't for literally lighting the place on fire. And walking away at the end, I think that that alone brings it down a little bit. Um, but it's really closer to a four than than a three. It's okay. um, uh, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I I like when movies don't have to follow the same formula and have the climax at the end. And you know, I, I like <clears throat> just living a moment. And this was just a moment in in some characters' lives. Okay. Uh, yeah. but yeah, there there are definitely some flaws with it. Right. Yeah. Sure. yeah, we're split on this one. Well, that's fun. Yeah, that's, fun. that's not unusual for us. No. So let's move let's on. Split and kill us a flower moon at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's move on to the Ryman pick, which is the new Sly documentary. So this is obviously based on the other action hero of the time in the 80s. This is Sylvester Stallone. It is on Netflix. It came out on Friday. So this is the nearly 50-year political career of Sylvester Stallone, who has entertained millions, is seen in retrospect in an intimate look at the actor, writer, director, producer, parallel with his inspirational life story. So I have always been a far bigger Arnie fan. So like I've always just loved Arnie and if Sylvester Stallone movie was out and an Arnie movie was out I'd go see the Arnie movie because Arnie was my favorite but I'd see both I'd see both but I would pick Arnie over over Sylvester Stallone so like I haven't seen all of Sylvester Stallone's films obviously I've seen all the Rocky ones I've seen all the Rambos and I've also seen all of the Expendables as well and then bits and pieces of of him I know I knew of his story of like how Rocky came about and like how yeah. he went about it, but I didn't know a lot of, the, of his uh, origin, like his growing yeah. up and stuff. So this tells obviously the story and it's still uh, Stephen taking you, uh, Sly taking you through his life and his um, journey. So also his house has far too many statues of him as Rocky. Like there is, yeah. I'm, I'm glad so... you say that. I thought the same thing. I didn't like, defend it. I was like, one of them. Yeah, no worries. Like that's that's pretty cool. But when you have like four or five of the same statue spread around your like massive mansion, yeah. it's bizarre. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's really bizarre. A bit much. I, I'm also very impressed with um, Sly's like knowledge of film and his what he wants to convey in each of his films, like. Yeah, I feel like that is that's really cool. Definitely, 
So I uh, um, didn't realize he was so articulate and well spoken. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, he's actually a very smart man. I, I changed my opinion of him a little bit. Yeah. So like you, you're only ever presented with the the action hero, and that's but there's there's so much more here. So like yeah. we get you get his childhood, him growing up. You understand that he was a bit of a troubled child. He got into a lot of fights. Mm. He got he got moved around to different schools. I can't remember what was it seventeen schools or something in a very short amount of time. I think it was twelve schools in eleven 12, years, something yeah, like that. Something like that. Like he was just moving around because like military school and yeah, he he was just not engaged. He was getting in fights. He mm. was just um, his father. Wow. His father is a not a very nice person at all. No, no, to, very abusive. Mm, like physically abusive is yeah. doesn't he doesn't quite go into everything, but it is heavily implied that his father dealt with things very physically. Mm-hmm. Even yeah, to the well, he said he said it like, but that was yeah. very abusive physically, like you know, violent yeah. man. He more or less said, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't go into like super details. I also didn't no. know he played. It was like ranked in polo. Polo, yeah. That is right. That's the most bizarre thing of I've, I've ever heard. <laughs> polo to me has always been such like a fucking rich white boy sport. Like yeah. He grew up like pretty pretty working class. Mm. But his dad liked horses. Yeah. So, so he he was getting ranked as, um, uh like national or country or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, me either. But yeah, yeah. (laughs) To be able to like say, but that's so bizarre. He was getting up there and then his father was like getting jealous or something or like, yeah, because his son was getting recognition to Mm -hmm. the point where he like grabbed him off the horse and like threw him to the ground and walked the, walked the horse off. And then later on again, they did a, uh, there was father and son playing on the same team and his father gave him Mm -hmm. a cheap shot. Like opposite teams, it was playing opposite against teams. each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like a charity match sort of thing. Um, they that slide set up, and yeah, his dad like wrecked him. Yeah, like totally, totally dogged him. That's that's nuts. But yeah, it's pretty horrible. Yeah, like this. I feel like this documentary really brings out who Sly was. So like mm-hmm. he, like you, you see him as the other action hero which is obviously rambo and rocky and yeah. then you, you always compare him against arnold who's very charismatic very like likable where sly has always been seen as a man that mumbles through the rest of his yeah. like his films and he's always yeah. always plays the underdog where this i felt shines a light on him which Definitely. will change, change a lot of people's opinions so yeah like him finding acting was just this. He he really liked films and he tried an acting class and it just came natural to him. He was encouraged mm. by the teacher or whoever it was. Yeah, at some the professor. Time. Yeah, yeah. Was like this is natural to you. You should think about this as career. And then because of his look and because of his the way he talks and slurring his words, he only ever got like typecast as an extra or a a um. What is it like a a thug? He like says a thug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah always, so always. He's always, always playing that, which then led him to writing. So he was like, had to. He wanted to be able to write and be able to mm-hmm. do different things to be able to stay in that industry. Yeah. And he knew that he knew better how to write for himself than other people, and he was able, he'd be able to write a character for him that he can perfectly portray without anybody else, you know, telling him how to change or fix things or whatever. Hmm. So he yeah. did. And that's pretty much the birth of Rocky. Yeah. I really like the the story of how Rocky came, like how he, he wrote it and he got offered not much to begin with, but he got like more and more. They wanted someone else to play Rocky, but he like yeah. kept hanging out. Um, I think there's uh, from memory, there's something about his dog. Like someone, yeah, that, was that I've story? heard that story, yeah. but I'm surprised that I don't know if that's true or not because it wasn't mentioned in this. No, I've heard the story, same one you've heard that he sold his dog because he couldn't pay rent or whatever. And then after he, after he, um, had sold Rocky or after he, you know, Rocky got picked up, he bought his dog back. Yeah, that's the story I heard. 
I'm surprised that wasn't in there if that is a true story because that's like yeah it was, it was... makes me second guess if it's true or not though yeah but like the the story of him riding Rocky and holding out and not selling it to yeah. finally meeting someone who would actually show um well produce Rocky is is really cool that he held out yep. for this long and I really like how he goes like that moment where you could you could either succeed at something you want to do or like fail at something else like that's a it's a big really big call where he was like yeah. really backed himself and he didn't want to have yeah. regrets like that's that's the stuff like the motivational talks that I listen to I was yeah like, I know it is I, like, I love it because I don't I don't connect with it I'm happy to just go through life and die like I don't really <laughs> care mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a so, difference you know yeah yeah, so um, him, like him holding yeah. out, and then actually Rocky, it's it was his chance to be able to tell his story and have that interaction with like confrontation with his father and stuff as well, mm-hmm. and him like seeing the scenes where he goes off off the books was really cool. Like getting those little yeah. insights to those movies, yeah, was like I said, that's that's when you realize that he's not just not just an actor like Arnie like of course it's hard it's it, best you're watching these pretty much back to back you know a few weeks in between um it's hard not to draw a comparison between him and Arnie and there, there literally are comparisons in both documentaries as well and they're both in each other's documentary um so yeah like Arnie I think was more of just he wanted to be on screen and and he was he was given what he was given and he made me made do what he could do Whereas Sly was more like, I know I'm better and bigger than people are telling me I am, and I can create something great. Like he, he was a really good writer. Rocky wasn't just well acted; it was well written, well produced, all that. He went on to direct and produce like five Rockies. Is there? And then there was it's, Rocky it's, Balboa, and there's yeah. the three Creed movies, and so there's what like nine in the Rocky franchise now? Yeah, they well, Creed's like its own franchise, but it's it's, like Rocky Universe. Yeah, still still uses it, but technically its own one. Sure. So like yeah, I also like how each of the movies is a different message that he's getting across. And mm-hmm. even even Rambo, like you watch Rambo and it's it's a, a lot of the movie is Rambo out killing everyone and soloing. But yeah. like he's actually trying to get a message across of like yeah. This, this person like each of his films has those different moments and then yeah. there was a part where he was like real massive and he was just doing bits and pieces trying to do comedies and stuff but nothing ever stuck because it wasn't it wasn't him like it wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't written for him it wasn't and he's yeah. not that he's not that type of actor which i yeah. i like that he he recognized and then he his unappreciated film with Robert uh, De Niro as well. I loved how he wanted to really get under his get skin. Under his skin. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't enough for him. Uh huh. So that it worked. Yeah. It, it's I, nice though, like watching this and how much he put himself into his roles. Like it, it wasn't just a character on a screen. Like Rocky had so much in him so much of himself in Rocky, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, same with like, and Rambo was more of like his dad. Yeah. And it's, it's like learning that and hearing the stories and stuff. Like it's, it has given me a different perspective on both Rocky and Rambo for sure. Yeah. And I saw something that he is the only person to do like three um, franchises or something or other, three action franchises. So it was like the Rocky. What's the third? Uh, the Expendables, but like he's the face oh, of right. the Expendables. Rocky, yeah, sure. Rambo, and Expendables, and yeah, like because Expendables because because we, we did um the Arnold documentary. Like Arnold said, mm-hmm. the competition where yeah. like I don't think Sly was that phased by the competition where Arnold was like, I'm going to be yeah. number one and like focused. Well, on... Arnie's much more of a competitive person. Yeah, and Sly is more about getting his message across and told on yeah. the screen. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. And I think I think Sly being the 
I'm not sure the intellectual out of the two is fair, but like he saw himself on a different sort of level. Arnie was Arnie was the front man, whereas Sly was the everyman. Like he he was able to do everything, and he was a writer. He saw I think he saw himself on a different sort of pedestal to yeah. um, Arnie, and that's why you don't really see the competition as much as Arnie. But Arnie's like he saw muscles, he saw action hero, he saw fame and fortune, and that was like. I want, I want more of that <laughs> sort yeah. of thing. But which is fine. I, I loved how they went into the, the 80s like action hero. They were like, the hero needs to be muscles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Because like, everything was about like bigger yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Even to like For the sure. point of like over the topness. And like mm-hmm. it's, it's, I liked how they, they spoke about how each of his films was showing the different points of his life and how even at the, end part is still sly but it's the over the top sly like it's the yeah i guess the ultra sly if you want even rockies became that as well like yeah they're fighting they're fighting comic, they hit that he uh the one of the guys that interviewing was talking about like comic book characters and how rocky went from being the everyman to being a comic book hero and yeah. that's fine like and, and i like that sly himself is like i tried doing different things and didn't work and I found what I was good at. I was found, I, I was known for these action movies. I'll keep doing them. I'll do yeah. them well. And he did. You yeah. know, credit to him. Yeah. That's, that's cool. I, I really enjoyed it. Like, I I had a great time. There was a little bit where I was like, oh, okay. It was like after his childhood where it was like, it felt like it dragged a little bit. But then as soon as they got into the rocky part, I was yeah. like, yeah, this, I agree. This, this, is, this is what I'm here for. Yeah, I'm not really, I, I'm not watching a documentary about one of the biggest fucking action movie film stars to learn about him failing and failing and failing. Like, that's fine a little bit, I guess, but I was more looking forward, like I said, getting into the Rocky, getting into the moments where he was succeeding. And yeah, I wanted to hear, the other parts I enjoyed the most is when I was hearing about, yeah, him putting himself into his characters and how Rocky sort of got written and, you know, he didn't he didn't necessarily like hog the limelight either. He gave credit where it was due and spoke about people who helped write him and helped write Rocky and whatever. So Yeah. Yeah. Besides that. More than anything, bar. this yeah. is a... Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I really like this is this this felt like a really nice life journey. And at the end, like he wasn't talking about him so much. It was more talking about life in general. And yeah. like this made me sort of reflect on my own life and recognize like you know differences in myself and my friends and you and <laughs> and like i think that's what that's what he did well whereas arnie's didn't really do that arnie's felt more about the life of arnie whereas this felt like just life and yep. and the journey of life and sort of one of these lines in this that stuck with me was the first 40 years of your life is things being added to your life and then the last 40 years is things being taken away and a lot of moments in this and we go like oh shit you know this guy's got a lot to say it's not just a fucking meathead on a screen yeah there was i also really liked his line where um when rambo comes home and he's sitting on the on the porch with the the rocking chair and it pans out and he's always like you yep. can't you can't see your heroes die like there's always going to be yep. that sense of hope like every, everyone's got their hero and you want them uh-huh. to like had that hope and that inspiration. I was like, it's a very, I don't know, profound or smart thing. Like I was just really impressed by Sly. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Just impressed. I, I like him a lot more than I did before. That's yeah. what these tacos are good at, I guess. Yeah. 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 It wasn't, it was a good, a good watch. I, the pacing was a bit unusual. Um, I didn't like, I wouldn't watch it again. And I, I'm not even sure I recommend it to people. I think that for the right person, this is a good watch. But, you know, I didn't hate it. It was fine. It, I was engaged the whole time. I didn't, like, fucking lose my mind over it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. I, yeah, wrap her up. I had a fantastic time with it. It was just that little weird part where I was like, I don't really care about this. I was like, sure. you could you could have skimmed over this. I really enjoyed the early childhood part to like see where he came from what he went through but there was yeah. that just that small chunk where i was like oh let's move on 
And then as soon as I got into Rocky, Rambo, Expendables, I was like, no, nah, I'm hooked. I mean, it's just that okay. little, that little part, that little part. So yeah, same, yeah. same with like Arnold Long. documentary where it was like the political side. I just didn't. I didn't watch that in the end. Yeah, it was like I, I, I don't care. understand American politics, but yeah, like yeah. for me, it's a four point five. Like I had a great wow. time. Look, okay, I'm a I'm a big action hero fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I sort of think it's a, a person I care about watching uh, it. I like Sly. I do. Yeah, I, I can understand it, but like, I still wouldn't even put Rocky in my favorite movies or Rambo or any of them. I yeah. mean, even watching this, but like I said, this this feels more like. A doco about you know you make down the road who happens to be a movie star and, and a writer and stuff like it felt a lot more grounded i suppose yeah he comes Whereas across due. pretty humble as well like he doesn't come across yeah as super arrogant or yeah but... i mean I, yeah it's fine i gave it a three okay like it's entertaining it's yeah. just another doco though like i don't this isn't this doesn't separate itself from a lot of other docos around the place um well, no but if you're in into... enough watch for me if you liked his movies and you're a fan of the, the action yes. heroes, like you, you're in, you're in. So, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's, I enjoyed, I had better time with Royal hotel than this, but you know, different, very different media. Yeah. That's fair. So next week we have the killers, blue eyed samurai and on, on I have no idea. I said that on, on Misha, Masha. Uh, Oni Musha. Oni Musha. I wasn't even close. Watching so, like two anime. Yeah, two anime and they're all on Netflix. Even The Killers is on Netflix. Oh, they are. Well. So it is The a, Killer. The Killer. Just one killer. I'm sure with the one Samurais, killer. lots of people are going to be killed. So it is. Probably. Mm, and play yeah. Oni Musha as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many things coming and Netflix special. But you know what to do. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you want to watch anything, hit the Discord. Hell. Yeah. Your friends. friends. And we'll see you guys <laughs> later. Love yous.